mm, post-war reconstruction in Ukraine. This is probably one of the most interesting of all the hundred shows we have done about Ukraine in the sense that um, we get into a nuance, uh, a, a complication perhaps, um, that we really have not examined before. Vlad, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So we're here to talk about what you're doing for Project Expedite Justice and as a lawyer in the south of Ukraine, very close to the war zone. Um, and, and to find out um, what you know, the sovereignty, the nation of Ukraine is doing about people that the Russians have deployed in place of, um, of government workers, uh, city workers, utility workers, um, in, the, in the cities and towns it has occupied. Um, and it's complex because these are, you know, in large part, Ukrainians. Um, they're trying to feed their families. They're trying to get along, not to, not to be injured or killed, not to have to leave. Um, so they, mm, they, they submit to the Russians and they help run the Russian uh, ersatz governments um, in these places where the Russians have, 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 have taken over. Um, this is a very interesting and complicated question. Uh, so thank you for joining us because this is one of the most interesting issues we've ever covered about, about Ukraine. So can you talk about what happens? What happens in a town, a, a small city, uh, where the Russians do take over? What do they do in order to you know, run the place? Who do they hire? Who do they put in the jobs, including political jobs, um, to handle things? Uh, while they are there. Uh, yes, Mr. Fidel, thank you very much uh, for this quite difficult question uh, and uh, one of the most important questions to my country and my region at this moment. Uh, I want talking about all the people uh, that probably I don't, uh, I don't know or, or don't understand. I will uh, speak about me by myself, what I've seen. Uh, for these uh, long months and long days. Uh, for example, when, uh, when the war just begins, uh, me, like a person who are working for two years like a lawyer and speaking with a lot of people, of uh, course, I uh, have been working for attorney at law and uh, someday I will dream, uh, I have dream about that, become attorney at law. Uh, I have faced one uh, big problem that um, the population of Ukraine is divided between two camps. Uh, one camp is supporting Ru Russia completely. Uh, the other camp is supporting to uh, European Ukraine, uh, if you understand what they're talking about. Uh, yes, and uh, this, uh, I think, the most uh the biggest problem of uh, of my country and population in my country uh will become into the monster because uh when the war begins uh we can see that uh this war uh, this war uh will not stop uh, be, uh will not stop in the closest future in the one two three five years maybe because uh because one people uh completely uh after the soviet union collapsed uh following the idea for reunited whole post-soviet union countries yeah into the one so this is the problem uh the problem that that these people uh don't completely understand what uh what does it mean to have nationality? What does it mean to have a citizenship of uh, one uh, European country? Uh, they don't understand uh, what is that uh, to don't live in the Soviet Union, to don't live in the post-Soviet Union country, to live in the prosperity country, to live in the intelligent country with the intelligent people who uh, completely understand uh their uh rights uh their route their path in this in this life and uh through uh, uh through the through their child uh, uh how can say it correctly uh 
forming a uh, forming a new nationality forming a new people that will uh that sometimes will going through the stars and colonize the mars if <laughs> if it, it can be like like a joke okay yes but um, but yes yes this is the main problem and uh, when the war uh, begins uh these people mostly uh, going to the administration of new Russian governments on the occupied zones like uh, Kherson or Zaporizhia, and uh, let's come back to uh, let's let's come back to, for example, 2014, uh, when the war on Donbas have begun. Uh, there was the similar situation completely. If people don't, uh, if if people didn't support uh, Russian government, this war will not come in. This war will, will not start, but they supporting them. Uh, I have uh, read um, a couple of days ago about the statistic, all statistic in the Lugansk and Donetsk Oblast. Uh, when uh, when they uh, declared their independence, uh, there was one uh, interesting statistic about the supporting of uh, uh, of government in there uh in their own circles and uh and territories and it says that uh more of 83 percent of people supporting this case supporting this government supporting this independence independence but i uh actually i'm like a lawyer uh don't think that this is independence uh for example my country going through um through the hard times since uh, since 1991 when we declare our independence and uh, make a new constitutions for everyone of Ukrainians and it still works and the constitution is the main thing in, in our law system but people don't understand that uh, Russians don't understand that and uh, the most awful thing that people in my country who supporting Russian don't understand is that the constitution is the one of uh, not one it's the only one uh, only one thing that uh have a sense only one thing that have a sense in the uh, in the legal system in my country uh so yes uh yes uh, some kind like that some kind like that and uh, the awful thing uh mostly is uh, that these people that supporting russians is uh, the most uh unintelligent people and prosperity people because they're uh don't even know uh about the political system about the legal system that have uh, in their russia for for example uh but uh, mostly in the post soviet union countries uh and yes uh, i think that the one let's make the co the conclusion about all of that uh i think the one uh, biggest problem in my country the one biggest problem uh in the post-soviet union country that always uh take these countries in the war uh it's uh post-soviet and prosperity uh, from our parents from our grandma grandpa and that is and um, maybe mr fidel uh in some ways uh you will not understand me but i live in beef people like that i mean uh, uh i love my family but sometimes i hear the things that uh that uh, actually i don't like i mean uh, uh i mean um, so strange things uh, that sometimes uh, that's that sometimes they call it paradox you know paradox because you have uh you have the thing that physically is uh, uh is have uh that that physically is is uh, some kind of that yes uh but they don't understand it they don't understand it because of uh, uh maybe with not so much level of uh intellect at the sera but i don't know yeah well but, uh, Yes. You know, I mean, yes. Ukraine and Russia, um, they've had a border that has moved uh, in the past uh, couple hundred years. It's moved so many times. Ukraine, um, you know, has had part of Russia in it. Um, Russia has had part of Ukraine in it. It's a movable, movable border is what it is. And, of course, people speak Russian near that border. 
Um, and it's, um, it, you know, it's, it's got a tremendous history. My, my family is from Kiev. Um, mm -hmm. And um, we, we thought for a long time that was in Russia. But, but it isn't in Russia. It's in Ukraine. Uh, see how the border has moved. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, as a result, you get a certain amount of political confusion. And of course, the, you know, the Russian government likes to confuse people. Um, Vladimir, um, uh, Vladimir Putin, uh, you know, he, he has a way of confusing everybody. And um, uh, I, I imagine that what happens when he uh, takes over a, a village, a town, an area, um, he is going to try to make those people his. He's going to try to hold, make the whole Donbass his, um, which is what he's been doing there for the next for the last six months. But you know, one thing I wanted to I wanted to read was part of the description of our show. So mm -hmm. we have we have the need for transitional justice, and it's a challenge. And the question is uh, beyond just atrocities, beyond just war crimes. Uh, we need to look at the citizens of Ukraine who have taken part um, in, in, in Putin's um, reorganization of the Donbass, uh, reorganization of those areas that he has occupied, uh, employees of the uh, governmental administrations in those areas, uh, the utility workers, the people who do public relations and propagandists uh, on the part of the Russians. Uh, the entrepreneurs who work in the in the occupied territories, um, and the people who maybe finance terrorism or atrocities with their taxes, um, so it gets very complicated. And and the word I mentioned before the show that comes to mind is collaborators. These people do know the difference between Ukraine and Russia, and, and they know they're helping Russia against Ukraine. And if you're going to look at atrocities, you have to look at the whole system that supports the atrocities, which is, I guess, what makes this discussion so important, um, because we're looking at all the people who are collaborating with Putin, who are part of Putin's occupation government, occupation industry, occupation utilities, um, and trying to figure out you know, what we think of them and what, what we're going to do with them. So I put, I put this to you, and you, know, you are engaged on behalf of Project Expedite Justice um, in investigating atrocities and war crimes and violations of human rights. What do you think of the people, uh, Ukrainian people, who have lived in Donbass for generations, many generations? What do you think of the ones who were helping Putin establish his occupation government? Are they collaborators? Are they someone, are they people who have to be held accountable? Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Fidel, for your uh, for your words. Uh, yes, uh, of course, uh, with people who are doing some kind of war crimes, who are doing uh, something that uh, completely hurts other people. Uh, if you, for for example, a collaborating man who is working in administration and helping the Russian to killing Ukrainians, of course, uh, you have. Uh, you, you have your own responsibility, but we need to prove this responsibility. We need, we need to prove what you have done. Uh, not all the people that living in Donbass, not all the people that living in Kherson Oblast or Zaporizhka Oblast, uh, uh, not all of them is criminals. Not all of them is uh, doing something. Just, just several several people that wo works on the russian government that's all and we uh, and we are looking for these people we are looking for these people to make uh, to to reach a justice some kind of that just uh, if it's possible in our world it, if it's possible in my country and uh, i think it's uh, maximally important but uh, you know um, the problem, uh, as you as you said to me before, uh, about the people who are living in the Donbass for generations and supporting uh, Russians, the problem is that these people don't understand their uh, nationality. They think that they're Russians. They're living there for generations. It means since Soviet Union. For the uh, more than 80 years in the Soviet Union, they're listening their TV, they're listening their 
uh, you know, there's talent for 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 example, talents, talents, talents again and again and again. It's uh, it's a, prop a propaganda hill that always, always uh, like a tank like it ain't going through the people and uh, actually i don't i don't think that they're criminals i think that uh, my government and my country and the people like me uh, should uh, contact with them should speak with them and try to change their uh, try to change their mind uh, firstly because without, without that this war this war uh, will be continuous and uh, it's not about the Putin war, it's about the country's war, uh, the people's war, uh, when uh, Ukrainians don't understand their nationality, they think that we are still living in the Soviet Union, but uh, we are living in the country with like civil war, no? Yes, and someone, someone, some days will reunite us to one biggest communist country and going to the brightly future but it's impossible it's mm. impossible because this time uh is a long long in a long long past yeah yes. that's clear it's going to be a long war sadly and i think that's part of vladimir putin's uh, strategy to make it a long war and to you know work on these occupied um, occupied areas so but it, it raises two questions for me um, you know, one is how do you how do you distinguish between those people, those Ukrainians who are serving the Russian occupation governments? Um, how do you distinguish between the ones who you would seek accountability from and the ones you would not seek accountability from? What's what's the what's the line? What's the dividing point? Your actions is the firstly your actions and uh, your uh your worldwide uh, i mean i'm i think i think in score is correct yes for me uh if uh in my in my life actually uh when i um uh, i i have uh, i have a lot of friends uh till till sometimes in my life yes i have I have really, really a lot of friends. Uh, but for example, uh, if your friend doing something that you don't supporting, do it something that can hurt you or can, uh, can can make you some kind of the second in his life and et cetera, I think I think you uh, you understand me. Uh, this um, ruins everything, and this is the line. For example, for the collaborations, for the people who support Russians, for the people who don't support Russians, if only your actions, only your actions, uh, can can show uh, who you are, can show what uh, what you think, what you do, and what future you uh, you want to build. If you want to build the future on the ashes, um, like a Game of Thrones in the last season, okay, it's your case, but you're the criminal. You're destroying this war. You're destroying my world. You're destroying my family. Uh, this is the line. Uh, the line between uh, between your actions and your worldwide. Mm -hmm. uh, even 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 if you're thinking that uh, uh, most of the Ukrainians need to die, is the criminal too? Uh, is the criminal too? But criminal only for you at this side. But when you're doing the actions and uh, helping to uh, invaders to killing uh, my friends and my family. So you are the criminal, and someday justice will prevail. So would you treat them uh, the same as, uh, say, a, a Russian soldier, a Russian officer, um, a Russian who um, you know uh, uh, shot weapons into Ukraine, destroyed Ukraine cities and homes and infrastructure? Um, are they accountable in the same way? Uh, I will um, I will make uh, an example. Uh, uh, a couple, not a couple, two weeks ago. Uh, actually, when when the words when the words Tatars uh, starts, they uh, this comes to my city only after one week of war. Yes, in my city uh, was Russian troops. Uh, your city, your city. Tell us the name of your city. 
my, uh, the name of my city is Voznesensk. It's okay. uh, it's the Mikolaev Oblast or in the Mikolaev reg region. I okay. think for American people it's more correct. Okay. Yes, uh, the war the war comes to my city at the in the first uh, first week of war. Uh, I um, completely remember this day because uh, I was uh, in home with my family. Uh, this uh, the, this was one my thing that I need to stay with my family at these days. Yes, uh, they come to this city, but uh, only for two or, or three days. Uh, they was uh, they was completely destroyed. They was completely. Uh, it was it was one of their army, uh, one of the biggest uh, troops. Yes, uh, but when uh, when they comes here, I I have faced um, after after this uh, this two three days maybe. Uh, after one or two weeks, when I speak with people uh, who have uh, like uh, war medic in my in my country, uh, this uh, this woman have uh, explained me a lot of interesting things. One of these things is that more than three hundred uh, young men you know, that comes to our uh, our ar army, I mean, like uh, like recruiters, uh, they uh, they have died. They have died at the first day uh, when these troops comes to my city. It was on the gas station, uh, like in the in the starts of my city. There, there is the gas station, and then after two hundred meters is the bridge. And R Russian troops wanted to take this bridge and go through uh, go through to the uh to the city center uh but these 300 people goes to this gas station staying there and now and after the enemy's tank comes uh comes to this gas station uh they all uh, was dead after that yes and uh, after that uh, our professional army uh have no how much how much Russian troops come here and kill them all, uh, uh, Mr. Fido? In uh, in this uh, in this way, I want to explain you uh, why it happened. Uh, why uh, young, uh, why my exactly my government, my military forces in my country uh, take these uh, young men, three hundred of young men, men to this gas station. Uh, and make them some kind of uh, some kind of cannon meat, you know. Everyone in my country is speaking about that. Uh, so I think that um, transition justice uh, should uh, should be implemented in the two ways. In the ways uh, uh, in for the people who inv invading in this country. And the people who protect the king in this country, because uh, every time when the war starts, civilians always dying. Civilians always dying. It's uh, uh, it's the one thing, uh, the main thing of war. But when it comes, especially when the army um, take these people, especially on, on the death, I don't know. It's uh, it's uh, it's horrible action. Yes, it's a war crime. It's, it's the war crime from both sides. From both sides, yes. Uh, and um, actually, yes, I I have started from from another thing. Just one week ago, uh, there is a rocket. Uh, there is um, uh, Russian missiles comes to the residential building in my city, and uh, I have seen this building. I seeing this every day, every morning when it comes to a job. Especially today, after uh, one and a half hour, I will go into my job and uh, I will see this building again. There was uh, there there was seven uh, seven children that was hurt. Uh, more than two or three families I don't remember that have lost their uh, their houses. They lost their um, residential. Yes, and it's awful. It's awful because it was only one rocket, one rocket that comes from my city and uh, 
yes, every day, every day actually, uh, we woking up with this uh, with the feeling that something will uh, will happen something will happen in this day it will happen with you especially mm -hmm. but uh, for the long time it's uh, this feeling is going deeper 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 and you, uh, you will uh, uh, you will not pay, pay attention on that in in some days but when mm, when happened something like this uh, it's completely going up and uh, remind you that I'm real, the fear is real, and the war will not end tomorrow. Mm. Yes. You know, I, another example I, I would like to discuss with you is the nuclear power plant. It's mm -hmm. a, a part of the write-up of this show by Project Expedite Justice that talks about utility workers. And um, I wonder if you could tell us what the situation is in Zapastricia. I can't pronounce it properly, but in, in the nuclear power plant, which is not too far away, I guess, and the nuclear power plant is being operated by Ukrainian operators, but under the control of the Russian. So um, are, are the Ukrainian operators, in your view, are they uh, assisting, supporting the Russians? Um, do you look to them for accountability? Because after all, they're working for the Russians, aren't they? Uh, you mean the Zaporizhka Oblast? Yes. Zaporizhka nuclear plant. Uh, yes, uh, I will tell you, um, I will, I will tell you the short story that my friend, uh, he's in the army now, uh, in the, exactly in the Zaporizhka Oblast, exact, exactly in the face of this, uh, nuclear plant. Uh, he said that Ru Russian troops, uh, dislocated in this plant, uh, dislocated exactly on the territory of this plant and, uh, they launching their rockets from this plant on their position, or position of my friend, his uh, uh, colleagues, etc. Yes, uh, it's the bad situation because uh, they cannot uh, bombing this plant because of the uh, nuclear dangers, and uh, they wanted to capture that by themselves. I mean, without any vehicles, without any tanks, without any ro rockets. And it's quite difficult because a lot of uh, young, young men is dying because of that. Yes, uh, actually, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure that uh, this um, some kind of war crime. Uh, I'm like a lawyer, uh, cannot uh, in my Ukrainian legislation classify it like a war crime. But I think the war crime when they are launching these rockets uh, uh, of this nuclear plant uh, to the uh, civilian objects. Uh, I think this is the war crime and uh, we can classify that. But not even uh, like, you know, like a tendention of war, like a tradition of war. If we, if we will see in the past uh, some kind of in the Second World War, uh, we will able to see the same. Uh, the Germans, the Americans, the uh, Soviet Union soldiers, they always capture uh, the uh, main objects and doing the same thing every time but uh but not in the civilians not shooting in the civilians and uh launching rockets in the civilians you know one thing you mentioned vlad early on in this discussion was um that the people in donbass who are supporting the russians working in their governments working in their businesses uh effectively uh helping the russians um don't understand uh they haven't had the education the training uh, they don't understand exactly, you know, what what Ukraine is, the national identity of Ukraine, and so forth. And I suppose they're they're getting a lot of Russian TV, because that's what Vladimir yeah, yeah, Putin would yes. like. He he wants exactly. to you know put TV all over them every day, twenty four hours a day. Um, and you and you mentioned that you know that one one solution here, one important thing to do is to counter that propaganda and to talk to them and teach them and show them that Ukraine does have a national identity and they would be better off, um, you know, being part of the independent country of Ukraine, um, <laughs> clarifying for them. So the question is, uh, have you been able to do that? Has anyone been able to do that? How would you do it? How would you, how would you countervail? How would you counteract Vladimir Putin's 24-hour TV 
in order to teach people what the real what the real stakes are. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fidel. Yes, you touched uh, the most painful thing actually for me because uh, uh, I um, uh, uh, I hearing this, hearing this propaganda uh, through my walls in my house every day. Yes, uh, through my walls in my house every day. Uh, it's the it's really it's really big problem actually because. Uh, their propaganda works really, really cool, really, really good. They know what, uh, in, in what points they need to push. They know in uh, in what ways ways uh, they need to share. You know, they need to go. Uh, it's the professionalism uh, for me, actually. It's uh, uh, since uh, Joseph Goebbels in the Second World War is the genius. You know, is the genius because they know how to manipulate people who uh, remember in their minds about the second world war about uh, including including people who has the heroes of this war who has the people who uh, who uh, comes through uh, since stalingrad to berlin and uh, this is the most awful thing they using their propaganda to manipulate these people the child children of these heroes uh to supporting their only only power you know to supporting power to mm -hmm. to make it more to make it more uh, stronger you know uh, and this uh, problem it's not even for uh, it's not uh, only for ukraine it's uh, it's the, in russian including most of russians um, growing up in this society growing up with these people and these people their parents their grandmother and pa don't understand that uh they don't understand when uh when they so much speak about this heroism of uh, their ancestors about this heroism in this war that making it not special not uh you know, for for example, for for me, I have uh, my own hero. Uh, my uh, uh, grand grandpa, uh, he was a hero or uh, a, a hero of the Second World War. He comes uh, through Stalin Stalingrad. He comes through Kiev. He comes through uh, through Germany and stopped in the Czech Republic. And in that moment, that uh, were still uh, still occupied by German forces. Yes, and uh, actually, when uh, my grandma asked him about uh, what happened there, asked him about the war, he always gone silent. He uh, didn't speak about that. Uh, when he lo looking on the statues uh, uh, or something like that, he's always he always si silence it. He uh, he don't uh, doing this like you know like uh, like some kind of show. Uh, like some kind of everyone uh, don't need to remember, but everyone uh, should kneel on that. Should kneel on these things. No, we need, we need, we need to remember these heroes. We need to remember this great war that completely destroyed uh, Soviet Union. That completely destroyed the whole world with so many victims. But they. Uh, to this, uh, but but uh, Russian pro 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 propaganda. Uh, um takes mm, this thing makes it uh maximally ridiculous and uh, uh like you know like a poor and bad food uh giving these people and these people taste it and this all because of um uh, uh because of uh ukrainians uh ukrainian government exactly ukrainian propaganda doesn't work well Mm. And uh, that, well, yes, that's yes. that's good. And that's a big difference between the Ukrainians and the Russians, eh? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, so you have neighbors, and you can hear them through the walls. You can hear them listening to Russian TV. Of course, of course. And, of course, and I, it's course. hard to be friends with somebody who is buying into big lie. Uh, so the question is, um, what what do you do, Vlad? You do you go? You knock on their door and say hello. Um, and try no, to convince course. them. Uh, do you, do you unfriend them? Do you not talk to them again? What what do you do to 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 what do you do with them? 
no, Mr. Shidel, if I will be unfriend to them, if I will be uh, some kind of enemy for them, uh, I will become the same, uh, the usually a citizen of Russia. Of Russia. So it's, uh, it's, it's not correct. It's not, it's not the way. Uh, if you have faced uh, the problem, you need to, uh, you need to solve it. Uh, you cannot change everybody. You cannot change uh, your, I don't know, your whole residential building. It's impossible. It's impossible. Yeah, this is what government should do. Maximally should do. Uh, of course, it's every one of us. Every one of us have influence of that. Uh, every one of us have influence on their home, on their house, and uh, uh, and the street near this house. But if it's not at all. When I um, when I switched on the Ukrainian TV, I have uh, I have always looking on the same uh, same things about the heroes, uh, about the some kind of we have destroyed the monuments in the Lviv city. We have destroyed the monuments of communists in uh, in some kind of uh, Zaporizhia. But it's not the way. L look at the Russians. They always uh, telling about the. Uh, creating new monuments about the speaking something like that yes and the people in ukraine supporting them because of that this is the point of pressure this is the point of pressure for our people but our government don't understand that and uh, i think i think the government understand that but the propaganda machine is not mm -hmm. so uh yes uh, you know, i think i think mr fidel uh, that if uh, if we, uh, if our government will change the course of propaganda, of this propaganda, uh, start to uh, minimally telling the truth, but maximally uh, telling about these points of pressure to these people, these people will, will change their minds. Uh, just a moment, just imagine that you hatred, uh, you you hate most of this country. I mean, I mean the population. Uh, b b because they're destroyed, uh, destroying the monuments of heroes of Second World War. And just imagine if uh, if we will not doing that. We will not doing that. And speaking about that, we have created new monuments. We have created the monuments for Ukrainian heroes. We have uh, we creating the monuments for your heroes. So just support us. Why you want to uh, to go to other country? Long live Ukraine. Glory to yeah. Ukraine. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Glory to Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs>